Good evening. This is the Elliott Wave update for the S&P 500 for Thursday, November 18th, 2021. The markets continue to adhere to uh, my current analysis as presented and today managed to add to that by putting in pretty early uh, the minute fourth wave within this ongoing minor fifth wave advance. To kind of give us a quick update, <clears throat> the market continues to, or the S&P continues to move higher within the context of a minor fifth wave advance. Within that minor fifth wave advance, we will have five waves of minute degree. And so far we have minute one, two, three, and four. We have begun this afternoon, or actually today, we began the minor fifth, excuse me, the minute fifth wave higher, and it is subdivided, which is making it very nice and giving support to that we are very likely uh, should reach up into this zone with a pretty good chance now that we could reach 4750 area to complete all of the advancing sequences. Now, where we are inside of all of that, I just want to open this up. Oops, my computer's going to do that instead of what I'm asking it to do. So let me go to the four hour, let me go back to one hour, and let's try that again. There we go. So we can see that we came down, and, and actually, I thought I had I originally had put the four here and was looking forward to this rally to continue. But when it came down like that, and I actually had mentioned yesterday in the update that failure for it to continue and start to break higher, which was having trouble doing, that the market would probably return and put in a new additional low below here, and we would just shift the four over, provided it did not break below 46.61. It continues to hold above 46.61. All things are still gold in terms of the rally moving higher and finishing. So we can see that, and, and one thing that I wanna point out as we're looking at these hourly bars is the volatility and the velocity at which these moves are occurring really takes on a higher speed as we get up into areas of new highs or in the areas of existing highs. But just as we're moving into also an expiration cycle, which the monthly expiration for November happens tomorrow. And so there's a lot of play going on, a lot of the component stocks within the S&P. And we're seeing a pull from the broader market. So that holds a lot of those 500 stocks. But then we also have a lot of the tech titans are now members of the S&P 500 component stocks. So there's a lot of pushing, a lot of pulling. And that vol uh, volatility has increased in the speed of which something will drop. And here's basically why. When we get all of our op opening orders that come in, they're going to show up, of course, either as a buy or a sell. And the speed at which they put through a buy and then it turns and it starts to go down is what's really picking up, particularly here in the S&P, because what will happen is that the, once the buyers are gone, everybody else hasn't really put in or decided that they need to buy or sell at any particular point. So we're more dependent, as a day trader, we're more dependent on those opening orders that come flowing in and out. And when they come in one direction and the buyers are done and all we're waiting now is to see who comes in next and it turns out to be a seller, there's a void. There's a void that's going to be present and it allows it to move a lot quicker until buyers are seeing and willing to step in. Maybe on the break of the 20, maybe on the break of the 50, we'll start to step in until proven otherwise. But today, it just really zipped. And this one zipped very quickly. And you can see on the hourly chart, that's a fairly large tail that it left. So it dropped all the way down, broke the 200, accelerated a little bit more, then stopped. The buyers came in and boom. And as soon as it broke back above that 200, it moved and it moved very quickly. Now, this is important because one would think that we would get additional follow through to the downside in this and we did and it stopped right there and the buyers just took over and they did not stop. And then it produced a bullish engulfing bar, not total, but pretty much. 
So volatility is really high. As far as the count goes, wave five is subdivided. Here we have one, and here was two. And then it just started again. Now, because the Dow was down today, <clears throat> and the Russell for a greater part of the day was also down, managing to squeak out a little bit of a gain right at the end of the day. Um, but that had a pull. And so the S&P had a lot more trouble getting back about 4,700. And once it did, it had a lot of trouble kind of staying up there and pushing beyond our initial resistance, which is 4,706 and a half, 4,707. But we still, you know, we have probably next level of 4,714, which is just above the existing all time. So we've got some pushing to do that, <clears throat> excuse me, that the NASDAQ already has. The NASDAQ pretty much has cleared its path to get up to its upper levels. So, but the, uh, the S&P now needs to do the same thing. <coughs> now what, well, <clears throat> excuse me, but well, aid that along is that if the stocks that were being hit today on the sell side find buyers tomorrow, so we get <clears throat> that balance where the markets are in sync in terms of they're all buying together. So we get a double boost in a lot of the common stocks between all three or four of the indexes. So one of them being Apple. Apple's in most of the indexes. Um, Amazon can be in more than one index. We have several of the stocks. So in any case, when it comes to the S&P, I am going to continue to look for the upside to kick in. That means a break above 4707. <laughs> and then the next tick up will be 14. Break above that, the next tick up is 722. And then we're getting into the zone that maybe we'll complete it. So it's going to be, I think, a little bit more difficult. But that's the ultimate, 4750. So 45 to 50, it's a zone that I think could complete the whole move. If the market's having trouble getting through these resistance, then it's going to limit the power that it's going to take to get it all the way through. So, but if it breaks above 34, it really does clear a lot because you can see there's nothing else there. <coughs> and that will have an effect if the buying pressure is still strong enough. Again, tomorrow is an expiration. Let's just take a, let's take a quick look at some of the stocks that are a part of and carry a higher weighting in the S&P. Those being Apple, Amazon, Microsoft, Google, NVIDIA, Tesla. Now, Amazon today was the stock. Amazon blew through, first of all, the stock was up $150 on the day. So you can consider that those strikes <clears throat> come at various levels. So it was blowing through multiple stocks, uh, mu excuse me, multiple um, strike prices all the way up because it started midway through 3,500 handle. It broke all the way through the 3,600 handle and it actually broke above the 3,700 handle. So that's a lot of options that are gonna get adjusted, that come into play, that now involve stock. So there's a lot going on, and that's all gonna translate into how our indexes move. If these pushes continue, uh, then, well, these stocks are gonna free flow, and these indexes will free flow higher, because it just will, the need to find buyers will be, excuse me, the need to find sellers will become much more dominant. And so it'll go to, it has to go to value. Where that is in new uncharted territory is anybody's guess. We have Fibonacci that gives us some indications of where uh, different human behavioral moods kind of tend to go. So how strong will the buyers be? How strong will the need be? the demand, then you're going to get your areas. If demand is really great, then you come, this is what I'm looking for. 
I'm 100%. I never can go above that. Yeah, it can. But it's going to have to be a massive across the board push. I mean, all indexes. So tomorrow, I am looking for higher levels. Play it according to your moving averages. These, happen, these moves down, as well as up, do happen much quicker because they're coming in with bigger size. And if you're seeing something free fall, Day traders, I'm not going to step in to catch a falling knife, watch it go right through my hand, and, and I'm standing there. No. And the same thing, who's going to sell it? You're going to get caught. And, and the name of the game is not to get caught, to tell you the truth. Okay, so trade according to the moving averages. They really do guide all the way up. Keep an eye on your hourly chart and also your daily chart to see how moving averages of, on those levels are coming into place. Pay attention to the price action and what's being formed. Now, there's a lot of there's a lot going on. Downside will take its lead from where it's starting to break on moving averages on that level. You can continue and I'm going to take it all the way down to a five minute chart and let it guide you. Let it guide you through the storm as this goes on. Because you can see when, when, the, when the buyers come in and you can see what they're doing, it's being guided up by the four. It's being guided up by the eight. And that's on, on a five-minute chart. Guide it up, guide it up, guide it up. And then as you get all of your charts in unison, they're all aligned, the one, the two, the five, the 30, the hourly. When you start to see that they're aligned in all in the same direction. So in other words, all the moving averages are heading in the same direction. Look at this. All the moving averages, this is the hourly, are heading in the same direction. You can go out to the daily and you can see what it is producing as you take a look. All the moving averages. This one is sitting above now, finally back above the, the four. But they're all angling higher. So we're not seeing any displays of weakness. Now, intraday, when you're using your hourly chart, you may see some of that weakness because it's going to come and it's going to start to break down. If it breaks the four, you're looking for possibly the eight. When it starts to break here, the 20 is not that far away. The 50 is not that far away. So a turn can produce additional power if it starts to break below these moving averages quickly. And that throws a, a lot into play on a day like tomorrow because it's an expiration. And if the market is getting hit hard in one direction or another, and it starts sliding through strike prices, it's gonna to add to the volatility and the pricing of the index and how fast it's gonna go. So keep an eye on a lot, there's gonna be a lot going on, but if you keep in alignment with what the moving averages and what the market price action is telling you, it should be a great trading day. So stay focused, keep an eye on moving averages, keep an eye on the LA, keep an eye on the Fibonacci, and have a great trading day. The next update will be on Sunday, November the 21st.